Sigma Tiger News, all up in your grill with the hottest, juiciest beef online. What do we got today? Real Israel. Sorry, Miss Jackson. Ooh, and Death Pods. Tune in. <laughs> I just love it. But guess what? I'm about to love it a lot more soon because votes are tallying up and not one person wants me to keep the mask on. So the reveal is coming shortly. Perhaps we'll do it on like a Sunday. See how many sig tigs we can get in and do a live stream perhaps. I don't know. We'll see. I don't even know how to do a live stream, but I'll figure it out. So what's going on? What do we got today? The real Israel. Breaking. It's now dropping massive bombs on civilians in Lebanon. Yikes. All right. Well, let's have a look. Much smaller than the one we had seen on Friday. So, uh, I mean, it stated that it was dropping them on civilians. Pfft. Not sure exactly. Anyway, right now, Israel is targeting civilians in Lebanon. Lebanon is targeting the air base where these bombs are coming from. All right, let's check this one. Well, just the fact that they're sitting there watching it and not like trying to run away and escape like perhaps they're aware of the target but I mean targeting civilians or targeting areas where civilians are all right let's see what we got Lebanon says nearly 500 people were killed and 1650 injured in Israel bombing Whoever tries to hurt us, we will hurt him even more, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said, adding that Israel faces complex days. Absolutely. It's been complex for almost a year now, deciding on how you're going to retaliate to having uh, your country invaded and also hostages being taken, which, again, not many of them are turning up alive. Uh, Israel dramatically expanded its aerial assaults on Lebanon with airstrikes Monday that killed nearly 500 people, wounding 1,600 more and appeared to signal a start of a broader military campaign. Most countries, leaders of countries, are like on the horn. Yo, Ben, what's going on? Are you going to put troops in there? Because as soon as there's boots on the ground, it's on. It's like war, and the allies got to get involved. So, you know, we got warships, but are you putting boots on the ground? So that's it. This is the deadliest day of conflict with Israel since the 34-day war in Lebanon in 2006. And why are they attacking Lebanon? Well, Lebanon started firing rockets at them. Lebanon is where Hezbollah is. They're a terrorist organization. Just like uh, Hamas in Gaza or Palestine. Hezbollah vows a war of reckoning as exchange of fire with Israel escalates. Um, let's see, Israeli, miser <laughs> Israeli miserable. Is Israeli military and the Iranian backed militant group Hezbollah are trading fire in the most significant escalation as the uh, on the Israeli Lebanese border in almost a year of war South Lebanon residents described how explosions from the intense Israeli aerial bombardment overnight lit up the dark sky the northern Israel sirens warning of incoming rocket fire wailed throughout the night and into Sunday morning as Hezbollah fired barrages of missiles deeper into Israel than it has for nearly 20 years the conflict in 2006. 
There you go. All lines up. Boom. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said in a video statement that Israel had inflicted on Hezbollah a sequence of blows and said Israel was focused on its objective to return tens of thousands of Israelis displaced. I really wish they wouldn't just use Google Translate and inflicted on Hezbollah a sequence of blows. Like, that's not what he said. He said, we dropped a, a series of bombs on uh, Hezbollah targets. Like, get someone from Israel who speaks Hebrew. I guess that's what they speak, is it? And, um, yeah, get them to translate it properly. Israeli military said Sunday that 150 rockets, cruise missiles, and drones were launched toward Israel, Israeli territory. Most were fired from Hezbollah in Lebanon, but Iranian-backed militias in Iraq also claim responsibility. Yeah, we covered that on Monday. Uh, Rambam Hospital in Haifa, the biggest hospital in northern Israel, about 20 miles from Lebanese border. Soldiers and medical staff turned an underground parking garage into a medical arena. Yeah, okay, yeah, so war's on. Boom. Israel's war on five fronts. How Jewish state faces all-out conflict against its Middle Eastern enemies after killing hundreds in latest Hezbollah strikes as Lebanon accuses it of carrying out an extermination. Well, yeah, they literally said they're going to exterminate all of the terrorists that are a threat to them. And, I mean, what about the war on terrorism? No one had a problem when George Bush decided that he was going to have a 20-year war on terrorism that accomplished nothing, you know? Like, Iraq definitely had weapons of mass destruction, and um, it wasn't Israel who um, blew up the World Trade Center. It wasn't. Well... Uh, Israel intensified the conflict in the Middle East to new levels today, killing more than 180 people in Lebanon in the latest attack since military officials declared a new phase of war against Hezbollah has begun last week. Mossad, the uh, secret service basically of, um, or the CIA, perhaps FBI, whatever, their intelligence agency in Israel, orchestrated one of the most psychologically damaging clandestine attacks in recent memory, injuring thousands of Hezbollah members with exploding pagers. Apparently there was like fingerprint scanners that were blowing up as well but president herzog said it wasn't me it wasn't us we don't know perhaps it was some other terrorist organization that doesn't like you undetermined lebanon's health ministry this afternoon declared 274 people have been killed and at least 1024 injured so far today alone prompting officials to accuse jerusalem of carrying out an extermination but Israel's hawkish defense minister yoav gallant and idf spokesman rear admiral daniel haggari Hagari, probably, say they will do whatever is needed to cripple Hezbollah's military capabilities and allow displaced residents from Israel's north territories to return home safely. I mean, what do you do? Like, a lot of people are like, oh, yeah, war's bad, but, like, these people came in and did all this stuff, and now we don't ever want it to happen again because it's been happening forever, so what do we do? We have the capability right now. It's the perfect opportunity to carry out this extermination so they're doing it like you know it's global it's conflict like what would you do what would what would you do if you were living in america and all these boats started pulling up and all these people just started coming onto your land you know what i mean apparently nothing but what if they had guns a ukrainian heavy drone of the baba yaga type carries a robot dog so this is what they're doing over there in ukraine with these drones if you're wondering Boston Dynamics. It's always the Twitter video that you don't want to be loud, that's super loud. And the one where they're talking, you can't hear them. There it is, boom, drop on off the payload. There it is. Active. Seek and destroy. <laughs> that is exactly what that thing is programmed to do. So heads up if you see a drone large as a car with what looks like a robot attached to it. Because uh, it's coming to destroy you. Alright. Violent mob attacks a Philadelphia police officer in his cruiser last night. Rampaging with total immunity. Impunity. Sorry. Soros DA 
Larry Kranzer doesn't prosecute violent criminals, period. Yeah, that's the only way you would get away with something like this. Or even think that it's okay to perpetrate. Look at this. Wild and out. So like an absolute disregard for authority, like no respect whatsoever. So I really don't know what to think of that. Like when I was a kid, if you did that, then like not only would your parents beat you, uh, you would be in jail getting beaten. No true words. No one, and I mean no one, has done more har to harm America than Democrats. Yeah, like this is a democratic nation. All right, families in swing state afraid to let kids play outside after Venezuelan migrant attacks mom and child good lord a member of venezuelan's tren de aragua gang they're the ones who took over the apartment building in uh, aurora colorado was arrested in a tiny wisconsin community for allegedly sexually assaulting a mother and abusing her daughter after he had been arrested and released earlier this year in minneapolis isn't that minnesota where waltz is uh, the governor republican rep Derek van orden whose grandchildren live less than a mile away from the prairie du chien dog prairie home where the mother and daughter were held against their will and repeatedly victimized told fox news digital that it was only a matter of time before tragedy would strike in the community and the white house's open border policies and sanctuary city initiatives alejandro jose coronel zarata 26 assaulted the woman and child under particularly brutal circumstances and attacked his victims over the course of a period of time as stated by police chief kyle tanier Coronel Zarata was charged with sexual assault, battery, strangulation, suffocation, false imprisonment, child abuse, and disorderly conduct in Crawford County Court on Wednesday. And he's on a cash bond of 10 grand. That's it. Wow. Uh, the mother later told police um, the karate has also assaulted her on September 4th, according to criminal complaint. During that incident, she told police Colonel Zarate allegedly told her, I get away with it. I am a criminal. I mean, like, yeah, he did. I don't care what your political affiliation is. This is not a democratic issue. It's not an independent or libertarian issue. This is a human rights issue, Van Orden said at the September 9th press conference. American citizens' human rights are being violated. They're being kidnapped, raped, and murdered by criminal, illegal aliens, and it's just got to stop. So this isn't Trump saying this. This is Van Orden. Okay, so who's that guy? Is he the police chief? No, that's Tainer. Whatever. I've been in the border three times. They let a guy in the country with gang tattoos and get a medical screening before you come over the border. They give them medical exam because they don't want people coming over with tuber tuberculosis. Former Navy SEAL said the attack had shaken a small community, but said that it was only a matter of time until migrant crime would strike here. Why would a town of 5,500 people be afraid of letting their kids play in the front yard? It wasn't like this three years ago. Yeah, so he was a former uh, Navy SEAL. Good for him. Activist warns of migrant gang war on Southside Chicago will go up in flames. Tyrone Muhammad, former gang member turned activist, sounds the alarm on rising tensions between Venezuelan gangs and local Chicago crews as migrants flood the Southside residents. Fear violent clashes are imminent. When black gangs get fed up, Chicago will go up in flames. So we got the local black population who are in gangs having their territory encroached upon, infringed upon, and uh, yeah, boom, the Venezuelans, murderous, violent group of gang members, as you've seen in previous reports, and uh, it's popping off. Chicago gangbangers rage against newly arrived Venezuelan migrants as Tren de Aragua moves in. They're in Chicago, they're in Wisconsin, they're in Colorado. Does this not sound like an invasion? What is going on? City going... To go up in flames, yeah. <clears throat> After serving 20 years in state prison for murder, former gangbanger Tyrone Muhammad never expected to return his city's tough south side and find Venezuelan migrants. Yeah. Covered it. Feds and state AG investigate an alleged human trafficking empire run in Springfield, Ohio for years by King George. Dispatches from Springfield, Ohio. The story in this town is not about cats or dogs. It's about mules. 
It's a twin tragedy of migrant workers from Haiti, exploited, and locals from Springfield marginalized. Just about every week since 2019, First Diversity Staffing Group Incorporated has shuttled vulnerable Haitian migrants in unmarked white Ford and Chevy vans from Florida to Ohio, where they are allegedly exploited for cheap labor by companies like Dole Food Company Incorporated. We covered that. There was vans going back and forth to these things, and people were like, well, what's going on? It's like, these are the Haitians, and they're working. Uh, yeah, do they have permits? Maybe. We don't know. Unlikely. It is a secretive and sinister operation that has gone unchecked for more than five years. The mastermind behind the plan behind this scheme lives in a $1.35 million mansion on Polly's Plantation Court. His name is George Ten, but in that underworld, his nickname is King George because of the opulent lifestyle of luxury cars, cash handouts, and fast talk. For years, he's operated his reign of alleged exploitation openly and freely out of a former mansion on E High Street. And there he is, King George, and a bunch of women, a couple of men surrounding him, not sure if they're his staff or um, if they're Haitian. I don't know what's going on. Yeah, all right, so whatever. So this guy uncovered something sinister just in 72 hours, the real story of this town, by 58,000 locals and estimated 15,000 migrant workers. Wow. FBI anti-trafficking agents and Ohio Attorney General Dave Yost are investigating the allegations of human trafficking in Springfield. We'll keep you posted on that. Kids as young as eight are drugged and trafficked into the U.S. by smugglers posing as their parents, Border Patrol warns. Border Patrol agents are warning that kids as young as eight are being drugged and smuggled into the U.S. by traffickers posing as their parents or family members, and nobody knows how common the horrifying practice is. Yeah, of course, because it's all being documented, right? They're being paid on the border to, uh, you know, take note of everyone who crosses, you know, get all of their information detain them if they're illegal aliens like you know what i mean set a trial date send them back across the border but that's not what they're doing they're really like this come on in you didn't get your debit card here you go yeah so people are drugging these kids and coming through and they're just like no have los angeles sorry sir portuguese espanol no English. And then they're just like, all right, just get them out of here. There's a thousand people in the lineup. This is insane. Just go on. Border Patrol sources have told the Post that they've observed increasing numbers of smugglers posing as family units in order to recycle children. What does that mean? Sex trafficking. They're going to sell these kids. Sick. And whose fault is it? It's not Donald's fault. Because he didn't sign the bill. Whatever. It's the old man's fault. Big guy. Joe, because he literally is the president. He can go down and shut the border. Mayorkas, they can shut the border. They can. They don't need a bill to do it. Janet Jackson. Kamala Harris isn't black. Her dad's actually white. Oh, well, it's a little bit inaccurate. Her dad's Indian. Born in Jamaica. So there it is. Like, which one looks the blackest? Janet Jackson, black is stupid. So is white. They're the only ones we're allowed to say. They used to say red and yellow as well, but... Good Lord. Janet Jackson's pushing a conspiracy theory about Kamala Harris' race, parroting claims Donald Trump made about the VP a couple months ago, claiming she's not black. Okay, well, she heard that she was white. Because her dad was white. And then guess what? Janet Jackson not walking back Kamala Harris' comments despite reports. Well, there she is. The queen of pop. Vicariously, because of her... Uh, well, I guess she'd be the princess. I don't know. Anyway, Elmosari adds, Janet deeply respects Harris's compliments at a black and Indian woman, making it clear JJ is acknowledging she's both and saying Janet understands the importance of accurate representation of facts in public discourse. So Mo El Masari, Janet's manager, clarified her claims that she, that she said he was a white man, her father, making a statement to BuzzFeed that Janet repeated false claims she had heard somewhere else. It's based on misinformation. So they're like, no, 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 Janet's cool. Don't, don't S on Janet. Like, she's not that. She's not that, okay? Well, Janet came out and said, oh yeah, I am. He's fired. And, uh, I'm totally not apologizing. The man who claims to be the former manager of Janet Jackson says he was fired by the pop star and her brother Randy due to disagreements after an article published over the weekend in The Guardian revealed the 58-year-old claimed Vice President Kamala Harris is not black. Janet Jackson fired me due to disagreements between me, her, and Randy after her meeting with The Guardian and her unbalanced statements. Okay, so he's a hater. He's, like, calling her out. Uh, that's all I can say. 
When asked for further comment, he said he could not receive phone calls due to the large number of calls. All support to Kamala Harris. So he's a Kamala Harris nut hugger, and uh, he's a Jackson hater. Because if he was hired for her, and he overstepped his bounds of disagreement, well, if she didn't say it, you shouldn't have said she said it. Period. ASU prof warns of forced breeding camps in event discussing speculative future without abortion. So this is madness. Uh, this is obviously a uh, left-leaning professor, as most are. If you can look up the stats, like it's like 90% Democrat. Professor Jennifer Irish also expressed worries about cannibalism. The workshop was titled A Speculative Future for Reproductive Rights. Yeah, my body, my choice, of course, always. Never has been anything other than that. An Arizona State University professor recently took center stage at a school workshop called Blah Blah. I already read it. During the course of the workshop, ASU Associate Professor of English Jennifer Irish expressed worries that the country's current abortion policies could lead to forced breeding camps and cannibalism. So much of our reality points towards those futures. The event featured Iris's poetry collection, Hatch, Dismantle Capitalism, and Elect a Female President. These are so important, right? Just buzz it. Buzz it out there. Spin it. The prose poems in Jenny Irish's newest collection, Hatch, trace the consciousness of an artificial womb that must confront the role she played in the continuation of the dying of the human species. The workshop description says on the university's website, according to that description, Hatch's vision is apocalyptic. Yeah. Just like her future. You know what I mean? Alone. And when she realizes in the twilight of her life, when the twinkle is beginning to fade, that there's no one around other than other sick ladies that they've built a facility for. And it's called Cat Haven. Welcome all single females with their cats to come and stay with us but they don't interact with each other because they're none of them like each other they all have their very own little pods anyway democrats to dub trump a chicken to pressure to debate harris yeah he came out and he said i'm not doing another debate why would i i already won two debates i beat biden and then i beat his usurper and they're like no we need another debate you know, like, you're a chicken. You you weren't going to go to the first one. He's like, Trump's like, what's the point? Like, are you just going to keep saying word salad? Get the questions this time? Like you didn't last time? Failed Trump assassin's son arrested after feds find hundreds of files of CP. Won't say it because I heard you get banned. And I almost got banned on Saturday for talking about uh, the monkey Authorities have arrested Oran Routh, whose father Ryan Routh, or Ruth, not sure, is accused of targeting former President Donald J. Trump in a second assassination attempt. He's going to get charged with assassination attempt. Earlier this month, Oran Routh faces charges for the receipt and possession of CP. During a search of Oran Routh's residence in Guilford County, North Carolina, on Saturday, investigators discovered CP files on Samsung Galaxy Note device, his cell phone. Prosecutors detailed the findings in a criminal complaint stating a review of the SD card located in device one revealed that it contained hundreds of CP files. So like, yeah, is it any wonder that his dad's a crazy lunatic? If you ever hear what he says or what he's written. And then you have his son all up in uh, the nasties. All right, well, in a first among Christian, young men are more religious than young women. Why is that, I wonder? Well, a lot of young women are turning towards the left, and the young men are turning towards the right. It's, it's literally like it's dividing. There's more women as liberals, and there's more men as conservatives. And why? Well, the whole feminism thing, it happened, and like it was for equal rights of females, but that's kind of being skewed now with the gender equality, uh transgender that is um so why well women are uh not attracted to a lot of these soy boy men and uh their toxic masculinity is being villainized whatever and women can find money just whoring themselves out on only fans and they are a lot of them mostly all of them that are online 
are whoring themselves out in some way. And I don't mean that in a bad way. I mean, like, whatever. Like, you dress whatever way you want. But if you're posting photos, but, like, trying to be provocative or erotic or sexualizing them to get likes, then that is a form of harvesting. It's prostitution, whatever. You're selling sex. That's what prostitution is. Anyway, so the dudes are like, whatever, forget these hoes. These OF hoes. I'm getting with the Lord. Because he's the only one who loves me and listens to me. Father turns in 10-year-old son after he allegedly threatened to shoot up Florida school. Well done, Dad. I mean, it must have been a hard thing to do. 10-year-old Florida boy's father turned him in after he made a threat to shoot up a high school on Snapchat. The threat was made in uh, Wakula County, about 25 miles south of Tallahassee. While a student reported the threat, the boy's father turned him in on Thursday, according to the Wakula County Sheriff's Office. Since January, there have been shootings at more than 20 schools across the United States. In early September, a teenager in Georgia took the lives of two classmates and two teachers and injured nine other students on September 4th. Suspect told another student it was the student's body's last day. Student body, meaning the students. It's an interesting way to write it. The investigation began on Wednesday after school had ended. The sheriff's office said around 4 p.m. that day, Wakula High School staff let a school resource officer know that there was a threatening social media post circulating about school. Yeah, so good job. The dad's like, all right, what does he say? It's y'all's last day. So that's a threat? Did he say anything with a gun? Whatever. Anyway, he was like, that was my kid. Get him out of here. California governor signs a law banning all plastic shopping bags at grocery stores. Canada already did it. It's stupid. Now there's just tons of these other bags that you have to buy now for 25 cents or 50 cents. And they're, guess what? They're made of plastic. They're reusable though. These are non-reusable, but people were reusing them. They were reusing them for like little garbage bags in their little like kitchen or uh, perhaps the bathroom. And now we don't have those. We have these other bags, these reusable Walmart bags or whatever grocery store you perhaps go to. And uh, yeah, they're everywhere. I have so many of them. I have a giant bag of these bags when before I used to have a giant bag of plastic bags, which I would eventually dwindle down into nothing using them for garbage bags. So you're not doing anything. You didn't defeat anything. Good job. Well done. California sues Exxon over plastics pollution. Yeah, so, you know, blame it on the people who are manufacturing the oil, sucking it out of the ground, because that's where it all comes from. Well, is pharmaceuticals next? Because they are petroleum-based, if you didn't know. Most all pharmaceuticals. The lawsuit seeking multiple billions of dollars opens a new front in the legal battles with oil and gas companies over climate and environmental issues. Yeah, Hawaii had this case going forward where they're actually going to be able to sue um, these companies for the uh, lying, basically saying that, like, you know, there's no pollution, there's nothing wrong with it, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, the suit filed in Superior Court in San Francisco argued that the people were more likely to buy single-use plastics because of the false belief promoted by ExxonMobil that they would be recycled. Okay, interesting. So, none of that stuff was being recycled. Well, it's like glass. They don't recycle glass anymore because it's too heavy. And most of the plastic that you do recycle, if you don't wash it, if you don't clean it, then it'll get rated grade D or lower. And uh, people don't, you can't recycle it because people aren't going to waste time, energy, and effort. They want to have something that's already clean. Have a look into it. There's like auctions about buying these recyclables. Whatever. So good luck with that case. 10 year old girl who vanished into Louisiana woods is back home with her family thanks to a thermal imaging drone that tracked her down. The whole rescue was caught on video. Read the full story in the link in the bio. Yeah, so let's have a quick look at that. So that's super interesting and a great development for anyone who gets lost in the wilderness. Thermal drones, not just for looking at enemies. Yeah, pick me up, she said.